Hello everyone and welcome to Access Health. Today we're taking a closer look at post-surgical wound closure technology. Erica, I am so glad we're talking about this because it is a serious issue for patients. As an ER doctor, I frequently see patients who come into the ER after having surgery and now they have some sort of problem or concern. Doctor Ken, you probably see the same. You know I do, but it's interesting because I see a different angle of that. They're coming in with me talking about the recovery aspect. They've been discharged, they have all this paperwork and now they recognize that they're on their own. Yeah, we know we either know someone or we've personally been through it. It's completely terrifying. Absolutely. You're really having to manage your care post-operatively. Yeah, but there is good news. Patients have options that they may not even be aware of. We're talking wound closure technology, and Access Health starts now. Surgical site infections, or SSIs, are the most prevalent surgical wound complications with more than 500,000 reported yearly. Dr. Daria, as an ER doctor, you must see this all the time. We do, Erica, and you just hate to see a surgical site infection when someone comes into the ER with it. It's really a dreaded problem for both patients and doctors alike because not only is it a painful complication, you may have to have your surgery redone, and it's a leading cause of hospital readmissions. Oh, no. So it's just bad all around. No. Longer recovery. Absolutely. Right? You know, longer. and it's also just not about the infection either, right? Mm -hmm. We're also thinking about what do we use to close these wounds? We use either sutures or staples. Oh. So the first thing patients are thinking like, okay, this is great, my wound is closed, but they have to come out and they may actually hurt, and they're also seeing all these staples in a row on their body. It's yeah, I think difficult. staples, and I think, what am I gonna look like afterwards? That's a big thing that patients really, really think about when they really should be thinking about healing. Yeah, right, and all of my patients have those concerns, but there's good news, and that there are technologies available which address some of these concerns, and we really wanna empower our patients and our viewers to have an open dialogue with their doctors. I actually met with a patient who shared so many of the concerns that we're talking about today, and she shared her story with us. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Access Health. So Erica, you were able to go out and meet with one patient and learn a little bit more about her knee replacement surgery. I did, Dr. Ken. She's an amazing patient, a uh, mother, a grandmother, and she had knee replacement surgery on both of her knees, actually. Ooh, yeah. both. Wow. So I bet she has a lot she can share with us on that. Let's take a look. I'm here in Tampa, Florida to visit Judy Stickler. She's one of the seven million Americans living with a total hip or knee replacement. Both of her knees were replaced when her arthritis started to affect her day-to-day -day activities, as well as the active life she lived with her husband and two kids. So here we are. Look, we've arrived. I'm looking forward to meeting her and learning a bit more about her struggles leading up to her surgeries. Hi, how are you? Thanks so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Come on in. Sour cream coffee cake oh, from scratch. That looks so good. Good. Here, I'll serve you up. I piece. will not say no to that. <laughs> this is an old recipe of my mother's. My mouth is watering. <laughs> okay, so, and you've been retired for a little while now. Four years. Four, Four years. years. Yeah. And, and you have five grandchildren five amongst grandchildren. two kids, correct? Correct. Tell me about them. Oh, grandkids are the best. <laughs> Everybody right. should have some. I know that you were really into camping and biking. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yeah. When our kids were little, that was our vacations, was to get in the camper and go, especially the beautiful beaches around here and parks that we have in Florida. That was our favorite place to be. So you were an active family. Yes, very. And grandma and grandpa are always there. Are always <laughs> there, I love that. So when did the arthritis, because I understand you've had arthritis for a long time, yeah, when did I've, that start? I was diagnosed probably when I, in my early 30s. What does it feel like? Not any fun. You know, there's days when you wake up and you think, oh, I can't even move. You know, you're so stiff and whatever. 
and they went in and cleaned it up. But knowing and telling me, you know, eventually someday you will have to have a knee replacement. Before you had the knee surgery, mm -hmm. what were your limitations? Like going to lunch at work, you know, and they'd go, let's go, so I said, I can't walk that far today, not do a bike ride, or like when we went out west, there's no way that I could do that. Mm -hmm. Could you drive? Was that all okay? Like if I was a long distance, then my leg would start hurting afterwards. Mm -hmm. And it was the same way with like sewing. Mm -hmm. It would bother me to stand up to cut out a pattern mm -hmm. or to sit at the sewing machine for anything because you're using that leg like this to sew, mm -hmm. just like you do a gas pedal. That's right. So if you're doing it for any length of time, it would would bother me. And then I'm assuming, did it get progressively worse? It, it does, and, and that's what they tell you. It will get progressively worse and will affect you know, your, your life. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's exactly what has happened with my niece. Yeah. And so then when the doctor finally told you it's time, mm -hmm. or you said, hey doctor, it's, <laughs> it's time, time. <laughs> um, were you worried? Because did you have any friends who've gone through it? I have I've heard some horror stories. My biggest thing, I wasn't so much worried about the replacement, I guess. My biggest thing was I'm very funny about scarring. Mm. I hate you know, when you see big ugly scars, because to me it, it just is a reminder mm -hmm. of that something was wrong. It's so. funny because you have such a young personality, it mm -hmm. must have sort of um, been hard for you to have your body seem to fail before. I think everybody, you're, you're younger inside than what your body is telling you that you are. Yeah. So I have to ask you a question. Uh -huh. I hear you've been married for 48 years. It'll be 48 years in September. <laughs> I think everyone wants to know what's your secret <laughs> to communicate. Mm. You know that there's a saying that you never go to bed angry. Yes, I think I, that's very, very important too. 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 But to communicate, and everybody has to give. You know, it's not a one-way street for one person. It's it's a give and take. I know Judy's very independent. I know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But were there points where you're thinking I need to I need to support her a little bit more? Yeah, we we told her to go ahead and go for it, and uh, we'll do whatever we have to do to make her, you know, as comfortable as possible and to uh, listen to her and to what she wants done and what needs to be done and be careful doing this and oh that's that hurts you know that type of stuff and how'd you like that judy <laughs> he's a good nurse he really is <laughs> judy and i took a walk down memory lane reminiscing about the past and looking ahead to what the future holds for her when my kids were little this none of this was here and we had just a little paved area this way and we did a hopscotch court for the daughter and a basketball hoop for the son. And one day he came with five of his friends that are gonna play, or four of his friends, there's five of them, to play basketball and they needed somebody else. So I got, I'll play with you because I like playing basketball, you know? So we're out here playing and they're not being real gentle with me, they're doing whatever. All of a sudden when the boys came underneath me, blocked me like this, I went flying in the air, did a complete somersault, landed on my back, spread eagle. Oh, no. When I looked, I had five faces looking at me like, <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> okay? Yeah. I know you had those concerns about the scars and... I was concerned with the scarring, mm -hmm. and that's one of the nice things that has came out of it. I have like the pencil line scar. I don't have the big half or inch side scar that most people have. I want to take another look at your legs. Okay. They are, there, there's nothing, mm -hmm. it's nothing. Yep. We're walking just as yep. a test to see how, if it's <laughs> yep. all the truth. <laughs> yes, it take, is the truth. It is, so you're hiking, you're walking. Mm. Yep, and I'm hoping to get on a bicycle soon, so that will be the ultimate test for me. Wow, what a story. It, Judy is really a special woman, she really is, and she was incredibly active in her early 30s, and I know now she will continue to be active. But when we come back, Judy and her surgeon, Dr. Scott Goldsmith, will be with us in studio, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Access Health. With us now to learn more about this alternative wound closure device is orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Scott Goldsmith, and his patient, Judy. Dr. Goldsmith, Judy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So Dr. Goldsmith, you decided to use the Dermabond Prineo system to close Judy's wound. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? 
Sure, I've been using Prinio for about five years now. It's a two-step uh, system that is approved to close all surgical wounds and incisions. First, a mesh is applied to the wound, and that allows the skin edges to be reapproximated or closed in symmetric fashion. That allows a nice cosmetic wound. And then a, a liquid adhesive is placed on top of that, uh, and that sets up in about 90 seconds. So the wound, as many patients don't appreciate it, is closed from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So the deeper tissues are closed with a, a stitch called Stratifix, which is a suture. That's a barb suture. This is an antimicrobial coated suture. It actually has triclosan on it. Uh, it's a unique product that allows the patient to have very little post-operative wound care. So all of these factors are extremely beneficial, especially anything that can minimize contamination of the wound. Sounds like a great device for patients and physicians alike. Now, anybody who's had surgery probably knows about different kinds of closures and sutures and staples, and now this. So what are some of the benefits for patients? Historically, staples and sutures have been used to close wounds. Uh, those are not very pretty to look at. Uh, it gives patients some anxiety and certainly upon their return visit back to the office it's not very comfortable having those removed. The greatest part perhaps about the Prinio is that when they come back to the office in 10 to 14 days for a standard wound check the little adhesive can simply be peeled off or it can just fall off by themselves uh, after a few weeks. I think that's really important because there's the surgery that matters, but then there's all the post-operative wound care and everything right. else. That matters for the success of your surgery just as much. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. You can put in a perfect knee replacement, but if the wound doesn't heal or if you get it, you know, a, a redness or irritation, which is common with staples or sutures, it can ruin the whole experience. Right. This is actually a pretty fascinating technology. I know, Judy, you had tons of concerns. Obviously, you were having knee surgery. You were concerned about your mobility, but you were also concerned about the scars, and they look fabulous. Yes, that is one of the things I, I was concerned about. At my age, you start comparing scars, and we have done that. <laughs> we have done that with a couple of friends. You know, sometimes I've seen people with some that are a half inch to an inch wide, and mine looks like someone's just taken a pencil mark down my leg. You know, the cosmesis mm -hmm. and look is very nice. The ease that they don't really need to care for it at home and the ability to bathe the next day, those are all massive That's winners. That's huge because normally they have to wait two weeks, right? That's correct, yeah. So. With sutures or staples, that wound really has to be protected from any outside uh, source for at least two weeks. And Judy, tell me you weren't so excited to take a shower. Oh, extremely <laughs> excited. <laughs> so probably was my family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, what about the, the mobility? Because that's what patients care about when they come to me. It's great that you have this beautiful scar. Mm -hmm. What is the relationship there? The Prinio itself does not help with mobility or patient range of motion. The ability to get rid of the dressings the day after surgery allows the patient to begin their physical therapy activities, begin moving the knee as they see fit, and begin doing the exercises which are, as you alluded to, so important to the whole recovery process. I mean, yeah, Judy, you were up and moving. That same day you're up and walking around, which is amazing, yes. The question I have for you, doctor, is do you discuss these options with your patients? In many cases, the patient bringing that information to the doctor can open their eyes to something that they weren't even aware of. And, right. and that's kind of how I evolved into the Prinio, is that a patient had brought it to me, and a family had brought it to me, and I began using it, and immediately fell in love with the product. Incredible, I've learned so much today, and I'm sure so many people out there have also learned so much, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, this seems like something that's really changed your practice, so I love when that kind of technology comes to the forefront. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for joining us today, Dr. and Judy. Now, Dr. Goldsmith, you're staying with us because when we return, we'll be answering viewers' questions. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We've been talking about adhesive skin closure technology, and we've still got orthopedic surgeon Dr. Scott Goldsmith here with us. Now, we've had so many great questions around this that we wanted to take some time to answer them. That's right. Our viewers are listening, and they have questions for the doctors. So let's start with Mark from Michigan. Hi, my name is Mark. I just had knee replacement surgery. Is there any information you can give me on uh, how to care for my incision? There's a variety of different ways that you can care for your wound. In my patient population, it's pretty simple. You don't have to do anything. So after the perineo has been placed on, there's a simple dressing that gets applied for about a day. The patients then remove that dressing the following morning. They can start their physical therapy, they can begin their range of motion. There's truly no restrictions on the wound care. There's no nursing care that needs to come to the house. 
Uh, and then in about two weeks, when they come back for their post-operative visit in my office, we take off their sticky adhesive mesh, and that's it. There is no further wound care. That's really a big deal because the wound care, the traditional wound care, isn't just there to make their lives inconvenient. It's because it's so important to keep that area free from contamination. That's so important for the long-term success. So. No, and it really is, and it's such a game changer in the in the wound care space, actually. When you really think about it, it's a big, big difference. Let's move on to the second question from Jeannie, and she's from New York. Hi, I'm Jeannie from Long Island. I have always been really active. Um, I started out dancing ballet at age six and then did all kinds of aerobics, step aerobics, spinning, tennis even, and um, just really active. And now the doctor told me it's time for knee replacement surgery. And as someone who's always been on the go, very active my whole life, I'm wondering, can you tell me what recovery is going to be like? Sure. So there's a, a hefty recovery after uh, knee replacement surgery. Certainly the first two to six weeks are the crucial functional healing. The patient is involved in a physical therapy. We actually start physical therapy the day of surgery in my patient population. I think this is becoming much more popular. Getting the patient up and moving two to four hours after surgery. Uh, they generally uh, stay in the hospital uh, one night and they get more therapy the next day and then they get home therapy for about two weeks after that. That's followed by some outpatient physical therapy. We see in most patients by about the six to eight week mark, they're returning back to things they enjoy, whether it's going back to work, whether it's going back to play, whether it's playing with the grandchildren or the children. Uh, and by about three months, life is getting much better. Full recovery in, in certain patient populations can take anywhere from six months to a full year uh, to, to fully heal. And again, as I mentioned before, the, the benefit of a perineo type of closure is that all of that rehabilitation can start immediately. Yeah, and that's huge. That's absolutely huge because it's really, at the end of the day, it's about the quality of life that you give the patient back. And getting it back so quickly yeah. is a really, really important thing for them. Yeah, and I think that's something that we all see probably in our practices is that the sooner the patients get back to doing that physical therapy and, and following those guidelines, the better their recovery will be. And if for some reason you can't do it, to let your physician know so they can help you troubleshoot and figure out why. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the reason that these patients are having the surgery is that their, their activities of daily living or the things they enjoy they have been limited. Have been so they're eager to get back to it. Absolutely. Great. And the last question is from Marquita, and she's from St. Louis. Hi, this is Marquita. I have a blog called Ageless Glamour Girls. And recently, some of the ladies of a certain age are beginning to talk about knee replacement surgery, but they're really concerned about scarring. So my question to you is, how does one reduce scarring after knee replacement surgery? Well, that's a very common question we hear. Uh, you guys might hear it as well in your patient populations. There's no way to completely eliminate a scar. Anytime uh, a knife is placed on the skin, there's going to be a remnant of that, uh, of that surgery. Uh, we call that a scar. Uh, the beautiful thing about the perineo is that uh, the scars tend to be very cosmetically uh, attractive, so to speak. Um, there is no uh, significant staple or stitch. Uh, uh, addition so that you don't have those track marks on either side of the scar. It's the one uh, scar and then just the mesh that covers it. And so when that comes off, it tends to not leave nearly the significant mark of some of the uh, more historical methods to close the wounds. And I'm glad you're talking about that because we've talked about some medical benefits and now we're talking about the cosmetic benefit. And to our patients, that is in equally important. It matters. And we can't underestimate the you're importance of right. that. You're absolutely right. It matters. I think that even, you know, I think looking at your scar and the way it looks, you need to get over, right? You need to, to truly heal. It's you have to look at your body and see it the way that it was before. Absolutely, because the patients can't see what's going on inside. They can feel that, but what they see on themselves is that scar. And so the prettier the scar, the happier the patient. Such great questions from our viewers and of course, amazing answers from our doctors. Thank you all for joining us today. And for more information, you can visit the Dermabond Prineo website. And of course, you can always go to our website at accesshealth.tv. We'll see you next time. <laughs>